Hi, good afternoon, and thank you for joining us. Hi, good afternoon. My name is Good afternoon. And thank you for joining us today for this Royal Bank of Scotland Facebook Live session. My name is David, I'm a community banker, and I'm joined today by Simon, our customer protection manager. As part of our roles, we usually present talks in our local communities about how you can protect yourself from the various frauds and scams that are happening in your local area. But while you're at home protecting yourself and your family and your most vulnerable, we're still here to help. So we know that criminals are always finding new ways to scam and it's no secret that they're taking advantage of the coronavirus uh, situation. In fact, it only took a couple of days for us to start seeing new ones coming through. So today we're going to share a bit about how these criminals operate, some of the new scams that we're seeing, and there'll be an opportunity at the end for you to get involved and ask some questions. My only ask is you take what you learned today, share it with your friends, your family members, and the more vulnerable in your community so we can all work together uh, to keep you safe. Thanks for the introduction, David. Um, did you know you're more likely to fall victim to fraud than any other crime in the UK? Now, that's quite a scary statement uh, when we sit back and think about how that could impact on any one of us. Um, David, I know you have a slide um, that would perhaps highlight the size of the problem um, currently and who this can affect. Yeah, actually, you're right there. Criminals don't really care who they target. So really, anyone can fall victim to fraud. In fact, about 53% of those over the age of 65 will have already been targeted by a scammer or fallen victim to fraud themselves. Um, in the UK alone, about 1.2 billion is lost to fraud and scams each year, which you know is a figure I, I find quite staggering, to be honest. Mm -hmm. However, only about 5% of people that fall victim to fraud find that they can actually report it. Um, this means around 95% of criminals actually go unchallenged. And it's, I think, it's in society, I think that's something we need to actually change. When I'm out and about talking to, to customers, the main reason I get for this is it's embarrassment. People just feel they can't report it. They, they feel stupid. Um, when people come to report um, sort of fraud to me, it's more along the lines of, I, f I've, I feel stupid I've done this. Um, I, I can't believe I've done this. Well, actually, you know, you're not, you're not stupid at all. It's just one of these things that, you know, everybody's going to get caught out. Um, and it only takes a minute or two of just, just, Pure distraction. A good deal maybe pops up on your on your emails. You click on a link. Um, it can really happen to anyone, and it can happen at any time. Absolutely, really interesting stats, and I think an eye opener for all our viewers today. I know in my role as customer protection manager, I support customers uh, on a daily basis that have been maybe impacted by scams. Uh, one of the common things that they talk about is that they may have been contacted before, or they may have received um, scam emails before. Um, yep. Is there a reason for this? Absolutely. Um, you know, scams, they, they, they very seldom happen sort of in isolation. Um, they're not random approaches of just someone just, just trying to get lucky. These criminals target their victims relentlessly. Um, if you respond to an innocent scam once, 
um, you then will get targeted over and over and over again. Mm-hmm. The criminals are highly sort of sophisticated and organised, and and they share them share your information sort of in between um, themselves. Um, so, say for example, you might just respond quite innocently to a quiz on Facebook. From there, they will gain some information about you, um, and they'll start to profile you from that. Um, they will then take that information um, and they'll add it to say a database and build up a profile, and then they will sell that information on. Um, well, usually it's a dark web, which is, to be honest, Simon, it's probably the, the part of the internet we will never find ourselves in. Um, but they'll sell this information on um, and pass it between themselves, and that plays a part in why you suddenly get more of these um, scam calls, for example, coming through on your telephone. Uh, because more criminals have bought that information and they're all trying to make an attempt on on, on you for money. Um, But somewhere down the line, someone will fall victim to a scam. Now, at that point, um, it's not, you you usually think, well, that would be over. Well, actually, criminals see that as an opportunity because if you've fallen uh, fallen victim to a scam once, you're more likely to fall victim again. So your information Mm -hmm. is then sold on yet again. And so the cycle continues. More and more criminals buy your information and you get more and more um, approaches. But, you know, it is crucial to understand that, you know, victims don't just only lose money. Sometimes it's about uh, they they, they suffer a big significant impact um, on their self-confidence, their independence and even their relationships. Now, in a time where we are all um, kind of a bit more distant from each other, that can have a a really harrowing effect on on individuals. Absolutely. Absolutely. I think spotting a scam nowadays as well is is becoming increasingly uh, difficult. Uh, the, the criminals are going to extra lengths, as we know, to try and hide what they're doing. Um, and they continue to be very, very convincing. So I've heard, obviously, that scammers uh, use a number of different ways in order to extract information. So perhaps you could expand on that for everyone, uh, David. Yeah, there's a lot of scams out there. Um, and a lot of them are based on just simple grooming techniques designed to kind of lead the victim into parting with either information, as we've just talked about, or indeed money. Um, so an, a, a kind of current kind of example of this would be um, someone selling um, a COVID test um, door to door. Uh, we've seen quite a, a rise in that. Now, when somebody comes to your door to do that, they'll appear very legitimate. You know, they, they'll be all sort of dressed quite nicely. They'll no doubt have some stock form of documentation, maybe a letter pretending to be from the government, um, whatever that would be. Um, so they appear very legitimate. Now, they're also very helpful and very friendly. So they try and build on the, on, on your kind of sort of fears of being alone. And they'll actually mm-hmm. bring in maybe friends and family that you maybe talked about. So they might say, oh, Mr. Smith up the road sent me down here because he was actually looking, he's wanting to look after you. So you start to be, to be bought into the whole kind of, uh, th- this chap is actually trying to look after you. Now, as the sort of scam goes on, um, they become very persuasive and they, and persistent. So the, a lot of scams that will have time bound, they'll be time bound. So for example, in the course of a letter, they might be respond within seven days or in the course of, for example, the COVID uh, scam that we're just talking about, it'll be, well, actually we can test today, but you know, we can't do it tomorrow because you know, the demand for this is really high. So they play on that fact yeah. and they build that pressure up. And um, so you actually respond to that scam. Now, from there, these scams can become quite threatening. Um, so if the scammer is not getting what he actually wants, he can become quite threatening and aggressive to kind of force you into actually making a decision at that point. Um, we have had instances where people have been physically driven down to the bank to remove money or a cash line to remove money. If you find yourself in that situation, please, please, please get somebody else involved. Ring a friend contact the police or, or indeed if you're if you've been taken to a bank let the teller know because we can actually help you out with that um it's it's one of these things we see quite often so never be afraid to ask and um, ask for help would be the, my main point there absolutely what, what i'm actually going to do now simon is i'm going to actually flip it back on you uh, you mentioned earlier on and uh, you, you, you deal with customers as well um have you seen any sort of rise in any kind of covid scams that we, we could really watch out for at the moment Yes, totally, uh, David. I think any crisis is seen as an opportunity for uh, the scammers to target us. So whether that's the collapse of an airline company um, or a a, a tourist company, uh, we've seen that with Flybe. Um, They jump on those and they start to send emails out. So we're all at heightened anxiety. uh, So we're more vulnerable and susceptible to these scams. In fact, Action Fraud only today they released uh, figures um, linked into the coronavirus um, scams that they've seen. They've had so far to date 641 um, cases 
Mm -hmm. uh, reported, which is a financial impact or financial loss of £1.8 million. Pounds. Now, bearing in mind, as you mentioned earlier, only 5% of scams tend to be re reported. Um, you know, those figures are huge already. Um, and we're only sort of so many weeks into this um, pandemic. So what I'll go through now is just go through some of the um, emerging trends in scams that I've seen, OK, um, all linked to the uh, coronavirus. So the first one uh, uh, claims that you do a payout or a tax rebate um, or that you've been fined for leaving your home. OK, so criminals are sending texts and emails um, stating that you're entitled to some sort of payment support or a tax rebate. Um, but even the ones where at the, at the beginning where you were fined for being uh, out of your house. So it's a scam. OK, the government will never contact you by text or email uh, regarding a fine or to discuss any sort of payout. OK, so please, if you receive one of these um, text messages uh, or emails, don't click and respond, because what they're trying to do is pull in your bank details. OK, so that either it's the bank um, card to pay the fine or it's a bank account number um, and sort code to receive in um, a, a rebate. So, again, just reiterate, don't click and respond to those text messages. The second one is the impersonation scams um, linked to email. So these are the ones offering health updates or requesting charity donations. So they're particularly nasty um, from the scammers. They'll send emails out that appear to be from pretty trusted organizations like the World Health Organization or even the NHS. They'll have attachments linked to these emails, OK, um, that are claimed to offer sort of coronavirus safety advice. But opening those emails and clicking on those links uh, can potentially infect your device or, or um, download malware um, to capture your details as you're using your computer. So again, if you see anything like that, please ignore it, OK? And then the last one, then, is the deals that are too good to be true. OK, it's the old um, analogy that deals are too good to be true. They usually are. All right. So watch out for emails, the ads, the post texts or calls, um, any adverts really um, highlighting face masks, for instance, vaccines or even, as you mentioned earlier, the home testing kits, um, all things that we are all looking out for at the moment. Um, but, you know, any deal that's coming to you is often going to be a, a scam and a fake. So if they're too good to be true, they usually are. So really be wary of what you're giving your uh, what you're giving to the scammers, because your information is your personal information and not theirs. I'm just going to go through um, some live examples that we've seen uh, via the text messaging. Um, and you'll see how clever these um, scammers are because they do look like genuine um, text messages. Um, they are. Here's, here's the examples here. So you can see um, you mentioned about the urgency and the sense of urgency that they give. So the first one there is urgent. The UK government has issued a payment of 258 to all residents as part of the promise to battle uh, COVID-19. So please tap here. OK, it looks like a genuine one. It gives you that sense of urgency. You must do it before everyone else to claim that money. The other ones are about um, the fines and, and the tax rebates. So these are the ones where they're trying to um, obtain information and put and scare you. Basically, if you get a, a, like the last one there, you've been fined three thousand pounds for leaving your property. If you then get an email or a phone call from potentially HMRC claiming that you owe money, um, you might think it's all linked to the same thing. So you're going to react to those sort of uh, situations. So again, just bear in mind that the government will never send out text messages of this nature uh, claiming that you're entitled to money back or um, you've got text um, text alerts to uh, charge you for a fine. Yeah. No, I think actually I've had a few of those texts myself come through on my mobile phone. So uh, yeah. we're None of us are immune to these types of things coming through. And I think with more of us spending sort of time at home, um, you know, we're, we're going to be a bit more exposed to a lot of these types of types of scams. Um, one thing um, I, when I used to go out and about with, with customers in the community, it was a lot of telephone scams going on. So that was the big one we used to see was um, a lot of these um, approaches over the telephone. Have you, have you seen a kind of rise in this type of um, scam since COVID's kind of been more apparent? Yeah, sadly, um, I think it's also because we're we're more at home now um, and then people are self isolating. Um, so we do get a, a rise in these telephone calls because people are at home to answer the phone. Yep. Um, uh, what we call these ones are what we call impersonation scams. So I'm just going to run through a couple of examples for you um, and for the viewers. And hopefully if um, you can identify sort of uh, the scenarios, if you ever find yourself in um, one of these situations, you might remember this and then realize that it is a scam. OK. So, as we mentioned, they're called impersonation scams uh, for a reason, because often the scammer will pretend to be the fake police or a, a bank official or even a BT um, or computer technician. Sorry. Um, for example, if we go through the bank official, uh, the, the, the police uh, official, 
Um, what they often do is they'll ring the customer at home um, and they'll say that uh, there's bank fraud going on at your local branch or that your bank account may be compromised, okay? Now, if you feel sort of or sound a bit hesitant, they'll ask you to ring 999 to validate their story. So you will ring 999, but they're very clever because they'll keep the line open, okay? So all you're doing is dialing 999, but actually just going back to the scammer or their counterpart in the office. And of course, they're going to validate that story. So when you come off the phone, you'll believe what you've been told now. Now, in the old scenarios, they used to send you down to branch and they still will, but obviously, you know, that's much more limited now. So they will try to get you to um, transfer money online. And often it's something called a, a safe account, okay? So please bear in mind, if you hear the word safe account, um, it is a scam. Um, no bank, uh, no police will ever send you, uh, ask you to transfer money over to a safe account. I mentioned previously about the computer technician as well. Um, it's an old school type scam, but it's still very, very relevant. OK, now this is where the um, computer technician will ring you to tell you that your Wi-Fi or your Internet is slow. OK, now a lot of more people are working from home, so the Wi-Fi generally can be quite slow. Um, so you'll almost believe what you're being told. Um, what they'll do is they'll ask to uh, access your laptop or your PC. OK, so they send you an email with a link. Um, you click on that link and you give them a password and they give you one. And all of a sudden your laptops are connected. All right. And that's when they can start their full scam. Now, these calls from the computer technicians can last maybe three or four hours. I've had customers who have literally been on the call almost all day. OK. They'll be doing nothing to your computer apart from uh, dropping files in and malware. Um, but one of the most important thing is they'll have a program dropped in that will um, mirror your keystrokes. OK, so they can see exactly what you're going to be doing towards the end of the, uh, the conversation. They'll ask or they'll give you some uh, money as compensation for being patient, allowing them to fix the problem. But they'll make a mistake and they'll tell you they've just paid instead of 200 pounds, they may have paid 2000 pounds and they'll have a bit of panic. So they'll ask you to go online um, to verify in your bank account what has actually gone through. OK, so, of course, you're going to do that because you want to help them because they've helped you. You've forgotten, unfortunately, that they can mirror your keystrokes. So as you go onto your online banking, you're now giving them the passwords, the passcodes and your uh, customer number so they can now see exactly how to get into your bank account. And that's when they can start to transfer money across if they don't ask you to do the, the transfers. So really, really important not to uh, give access to, the, to your laptop. Yeah, I think you cover off quite a bit there. Um, what would you say in order for people to actually protect themselves from these types of scams? Because I think these ones are quite worrying. So how, how would you protect yourself um, from this type yep. of scam? No, absolutely. I think reiterate, never give remote access to your computer or laptop. OK, that's a 100 percent no. Um, always verify the caller using an independent verified telephone number, such as the one from our website or the back of your bank card. Um, and remember about the line being open. So if you are going to phone, try and phone um, someone that you recognize a voice, a family or friend. So, you know, the line's clear, even the talking clock, if you have to. The bank will never ask you and the police will never ask you to move money to a safe account. OK, not at all. So please, please keep an eye out for that. Um, and you will never receive a genuine call to tell you your Wi-Fi, your Internet is slow. Yeah, no, absolutely. I think um, my favourite one there, the one I always share is around phoning the talking clock just to break that line, just to make sure yeah. you know, that the connection is broken between um, yourself and, and that criminal. Yeah. Now, um, with, with us all sort of spending a lot more time at home, we've mentioned that before, and we're, we're kind of interacting with each other in a very different way as potentially we'd have done maybe, say, three or four weeks ago. Um, have you seen a rise in the types of romance scams or impersonation scams? Because um, I think it's quite prevalent in these times that, you know, as we, as we interact differently, you know, what, what are you actually seeing at the moment on the ground? Yeah, just on a sad state of affairs, it is. Um, the, the, the romance or befriending scams are still there. Um, they usually make the headlines because uh, they often can involve quite a lot of money being lost. Um, now, what we're seeing is that these often start on a, like a dating site, for instance, but we're more and more because we're self-isolating, we're at home more, um, random messages being received via social media like Facebook Messenger or Instagram Messenger is a new one. So they start very warm approach, just collecting information from you. Um, they'll often try to ask personal information um, and try and mirror that. So if you've lost someone quite recently or you've just gone through maybe a divorce, then the scammer will say the same thing. OK, so you have that empathy and then they have that connection with you. What they often then do is move you off um, the, the social media networks. Um, onto the Google Hangouts, uh, the WhatsApp. So they're isolating you now. So instead of being with your friends and family, you're now isolated to a one-on-one, -on -one, okay? And that's really where the scam start, starts to build up. Um, at, 
some stage they will ask for money, whether it's a small amount or a large amount. Um, and that's when you have to try and understand that it is a scam. Not one uh, customer, sadly, that I've been supporting in the last four or five years has ever, you know, um, received the money back that they promised right. that from the uh, from their sort of partner, so to speak. I think some key tips really from the romance scam side of thing or the befriending scam is don't accept random messages from strangers. We often talk to our kids about not talking to strangers and I think it applies to us as adults as well on many occasions. Be wary of approaches made and stories that sound like your own personal situation because they're just mirroring that um, scenario. And remind yourself you've never met this person face to face. OK, so talk to someone you can trust about it. Um, get another person to sort of consider it. I know when I talk to customers often, um, you know, I'm providing my sort of side of the story and it makes them stop sometimes stop and think, actually, you're right. We've never met and, and he's asking for money. Yeah. Okay. yeah. No, I think uh, you certainly mentioned some great top tips there. And certainly when I've been dealing with these types of scams in the past as well, it's actually convincing the person that the, the person they're dealing with just isn't real. And I think they kind of go through a bit of a grieving process. So if you've got somebody that is going through this, please help them through it because uh, it will be a tough time. Um, yeah. Some great top tips, as I said. Um, if somebody wants to sort of learn more about this and sort of read up, um, where, where would you direct, direct them to? Yeah, absolutely. Um, we've got potentially more time on our hands at the moment. So, you know, certainly the Royal Bank of Scotland webpage has a security centre full of information about scams, really, really clear videos um, and identification of what scams to look for. So please use some time to go to the uh, security page and there's a link on the slide there for the viewers. Um, the Friends Against Scams site run by the National Trading Standards is fantastic. They run a, a Friends Against Scams um, uh, presentation for 20 minutes and at the end of it you become a friend against scam so what better time uh, to sit with your family and friends for 20 minutes with a cup of tea or coffee and just run through that because it really helps uh, raise the awareness if you think you've been a victim you know please contact uh, us in the first instance if you have felt like you've lost money but also you should be reporting that scam to the action fraud um, and your local police as well and, and don't forget to talk so you're not alone and shouldn't feel embarrassed um, by being caught out Yep, absolutely. Thanks very much for that. And I think just before we go to questions, we've mentioned quite a lot um, this afternoon. There's been quite a lot of information thrown out there. It would be great if you could just kind of um, sort of summarise it and maybe say five key sharp points just so um, people watching can actually take that away with them. That would be great. Yeah, certainly. Um, and you're right, a lot of information. So I think my top tips uh, for everyone out there at the moment is be extra careful if you receive phone calls, texts or emails from anyone claiming to be from the bank or other trusted organisation, okay? A reminder that we'll never contact you out of the blue to ask for PIN numbers and full password card reader details, okay? Um, be wary of these emails from um, the, the trusted organisations related to the coronavirus, as we've already mentioned as well, okay? So just remember that your personal information is yours, so don't give that away. Never click on an email or a text uh, with a link um, that takes you to a website. Often it's about data gathering in that instance. So always go via the search engine or directly to the company website if you can remember to do so. Really important, as I said, never allow remote access to your computer um, by third parties. Scammers will often ask you to download an app uh, or will send you an email with a link such as Team Viewer. OK, so just be, be wary of that. Watch out for poor grammar or spelling on emails, printed material and letters. Now, they're the old school scams with these emails and these um you know, fake lottery letters that uh, come through the post. So just be wary of those. Um, they still go on, sadly, um, and people still lose money um, from that. And then lastly, just as importantly, take five. So just stop. Think about what you're doing. Think about what you're being asked to do. Uh, if you're concerned, please stop and talk to family friend, uh, family uh, or friend. Perfect. Thanks very much for that. And so now it's over to you guys. Um, I can see a couple of questions that are starting to come through. So I'm just going to start. Now let's have a look. Um, here's the first one coming through. It's how do I spot a fake email? I'll pass that one to yourself, Simon. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, I, I see a lot of uh, customers um, who are being sort of caught out by fake emails. So they and, and they very kindly send them on to me so I can sort of identify why it's a fake email. And often um, the scammer will use a reputable company, but have it linked to maybe a Google um, or Gmail account email address or even a Yahoo um, or Hotmail. So we know that a lot of reputable companies don't use um, those sorts of uh, emails. Okay. So really um quick one to check is what the actual email address says you can also right click and, and look at the properties of an email and it will show you sometimes the originating email so that will highlight 
um, that it's, uh, you know, being protected. It's been covered by this sort of other email address. So certainly look out for those top tips there. Have you got anything to add? Um, no, absolutely no. I think you covered off pretty much most of what I would have actually said there. Um, there's actually another one coming in here. I'm just going to quickly read that. So from the fraud, you're aware. So I can't quite, my, my apologies, I'm having trouble with my, my screen here. I don't know if you can see that. That's much. okay, I can read that one. It says, yep, it says, from the fraud you're aware of, do you know what is being done to prevent this from happening to someone else? Um, and will customers receive a full refund from RBS? So two parts to that question. Um, certainly with the um, coronavirus, uh, vi um, coronavirus fraud um, that we're seeing, we're certainly escalating that amongst our social media. So we're making sure everyone's aware of the, the emerging scams um, that are coming out. And we often update our social media with those types of scams, um, whether it's coronavirus related or not. OK, so I think the fly B was a similar one as well. Um, do you get a full refund? Every case is reviewed, um, unfortunately, on a on a one to one basis. Um, and it depends on the type of uh, scam and whether it's uh, a scam or a fraud. OK, because there is a, a difference between the two. Yep, perfect. OK, so is contactless payments safe? So uh, absolutely. Um, I think. Uh, the actual the confidence around that has been shown just recently where we've actually increased um the the contactless amount up to 45 pounds so i think um you know you, there is there is fail safes um, involved so if somebody does steal your card it can only have you can only use it a couple of times before and there's various blocks put in place so feel free to use the contact list thing and certainly in times where we are um dealing with various sort of viruses and such like it's actually quite a safe way sort of from a from a more medical point of view because you're not coming in contact with a, a, a keypad or anything along those lines so and uh, not only to keep you safe from from fraudsters but it also keeps you safe uh, from a medical point of view as well yep yeah, absolutely. I think there was a, a social media video floating around a couple of years ago with someone with a, a card reader on their person walking past uh, someone with a handbag and, and, you know, getting a payment from it. But that was um, it was a fake uh, video. So it's not something that we're seeing, um, certainly from contactless. No, absolutely. And I think there are lots of different devices as well you can use, not only just your contactless card, but a lot of um, sort of maybe and the different sort of devices, sort of Apple, Apple, sort of, um, Apple Pay or Google Pay, all these different yeah. things that have, again, they've all got fail safes in them, but it allows you again to make these payments in quite a, quite a safe manner. So, yeah, absolutely. Um, I don't see any more questions coming in. So, what we'll do is we'll draw the questions to, to a close there at the moment. Um, so, basically just want to sum up by saying I hope you found today interesting um, and as I said at the start it'd be great if you could actually share what you've learned today uh, with your friends and your families and, and those you care about in your community because uh, this is the way we're going to actually um, sort of stop a lot of these frauds and scams is just yeah. allowing people to talk about it a lot more freely and hopefully people then feel the actual they can actually go and actually report these to the police um, or or, or you know, please call, contact your bank and let us know about it. So again, just again, thank you from Simon and I. And again, above all, thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you.